I feel better. You feel better? Good. Penguin started with an intense episode. I mean, Batman and Max's ability to make a mob show. It's like a match made in Tony Soprano's heaven. Let's break it down. We're only one episode in, but so far I have to say I'm digging the vibe of the show. It's more like just a crime drama that's set in the Batman universe. And ever since the Nolan Batman trilogy, the cinematic universes have been a bit more realistic. So it feels at this point that we're just watching a well-made mob show that Batman just also exists in. Not to mention the prosthetics they use to make Colin Farrell into Oswald Cobb, aka the Penguin. You completely forget that it's him. But at moments, it feels like Colin Farrell's real voice comes out, but only when he's grunting and stuff, so I'll let it pass. You know, because they need my opinion. But yeah, so far, I'm a fan of the show. It's starting extremely fast. That being said, we have a lot to go over, so let's get into it. Penguin starts with Oswald Cobb, AKA the Penguin, looking over Gotham through a movie window. I mean, how often do you see a window like this in real life? I mean, really, I mean, usually windows are square, they're normal everywhere you go, even in the fancy places, they're just normal. Every once in a while you go somewhere and there's a cool window. Anyways, the events of the newest Batman have just taken place, meaning that Edward Nigma, AKA the Riddler, just set off a series of explosions we are getting unconfirmed reports about a series of explosions along the city seawall. Causing massive, and I mean massive, destruction. Batman was able to save a lot of people, showing personal growth as a hero. We are live watching the Batman vigilante atop Gotham Square Garden, helping to save the lives of hundreds of injured victims after devastating explosions took out the city's seat. When it's time to rebuild, the new mayor gives a speech. Just like in reality, the rich didn't build their mansions in the path of a possible disaster, so the poor are dying and the rich are just untouched. The city of Gotham is in a state of insanity. Riding and looting is everywhere, plus the supply chain for drugs is all messed up. So that means that the drug addicts are clear-headed and angry. I want my drugs back. And with Carmine Falcone also dead, there's a huge power vacuum. But his son might be set to take his place, but that kid likes his drinks, so we will see. Also, just imagine this. All of this is being reported on like it's TMZ, not CNN. The bad guys own this city and no one cares. The Penguin listens to all of this on the news and is obviously planning his next move. Wouldn't be much of a Batman villain if he doesn't do some time planning. So then Penguin drives to under a subway bridge in Gotham. You know, where crime stuff happens. Penguin waddles into his warehouse house under his umbrella waddle, 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 watch them wave. but when he goes into the elevator you see that it's not a warehouse anymore he walks into an office with the same kind of window holding a sledgehammer he walks up to a wall and hits it until he breaks through and finds files he finds a lot of stuff but mostly dirt on some powerful people he starts looking at the jewelry when alberto the kid mob boss walks in and pulls a gun see so you've made yourself at home Penguin plays it off as he's doing him a solid by finding all of this stuff before someone else does and giving it all to Alberto. But the kid mob boss isn't buying it until the Penguin pulls the right card. You all right? Because we keep a stash in the loft if you want to hit. But Al says no, he needs to keep his head clear because he's working on a big deal. Alberto has a substance problem, so Penguin says we have to celebrate. Staying off the drops, good on you. But booze don't count, does it? So boom, next thing you know, they're finishing the bottle and it looks like most of it was Alberta. And then boom, the drops are in and he's on drugs. Penguin is literally an enabler. And now Alberto is talking and talking. He has a plan to make a new drug that will change the illegal narcotics business in Gotham forever. And he gives Penguin a necklace to be quiet so that the other high powered criminals don't find out. But also he calls out Penguin for all of his skimming off of the top. But he also knew you were a dirty soldier skims money off the top. He says that his father knew all along but let it happen because it wasn't too much and he knew that men like Penguin needed a little win every now and then. That's when we see Penguin get tense. But Alberto just keeps talking, that he's worried that he won't be able to live up to his father and get the same kind of respect that his father commanded. So Penguin tells him about an old gangster from Penguin's neighborhood named Rex Calabrese. He was a criminal but he helped the community and he knew everyone's name and everyone loved him. So he did bad so that he could do good and the neighborhood loved him for it. 
They even had a parade for him when he died. It's actually kind of a cool thought, but Alberto doesn't get it. Would that make it easier for you to take what's mine? He goes in on Penguin, calling him pathetic to ever even want something like that. He says that no one would put his ugly face on a parade float after he dies. And then Penguin just... That really wasn't part of the plan that we were discussing earlier. This really isn't the time for you to be judging me. But I guess plans change. Penguin laughs and looks at his work, you know, like, who's the boss now? But then reality sets in. Fuck. And people of YouTube world, we just got to the title card. I guess it was only 12 minutes, but it was an intense 12 minutes. Now Oswald Cobb has to clean this up by himself. He's not the most mobile of guys, so he takes a few shortcuts. But it seems like he gets the job done, and when he's leaving, he sees some kids trying to steal his rims. And boom, the gun is out again. One kid doesn't get away, and the kid begs for his life. His name is Victor, and now he's Penguin's accomplice to help him carry this body. How far do you think you'd get? Penguin is saying they're in this together now, which means he owns him. You're gonna do everything I say. Or else I'll murder you and uh, anyone you care about. Now that was mobster cool, but this line here is just crazy. I feel better. You feel better? Good. Imagine your buddy says, hey, I know a way we can make some quick cash. You have your reservations, but you need the money. The city is flooded. But then you're the slowest one of your friends and boom, you're tied to an insane mobster. Not just an insane mobster, but he looks like the penguin from Billy Madison and an actual human had a baby. I'm just saying the night could have gone a little better for Victor. He even lets Victor drive, which Victor does not understand. Penguin stares at Victor and Victor is terrified. Penguin destroys the phone he took off the kid mob box, but after he gets the date for an appointment for a shipment, which is pretty much the only thing on his phone. Then he casually starts talking about his little air freshener. Victor is like, what the hell is this guy talking about? But Penguin knows he needs guys, lots of guys, a new army because he has no loyalty from the mob family. So Victor might just be the number one in the Penguin army. They talk about slushies at a mini mart, mixing flavors, stuff like that. Finally, they get to their destination in the shadiest part of town and they go to a lady of the night's apartment and he asks for an alibi. He pays the lady and then they go burn some of the evidence over burgers, you know, like one does. Ask for extra pickles and they give me two. Penguin is so casual about everything and it seems to be taking Victor's guard down. I mean, I guess it seems like he just may be a lonely gangster. By morning, they're finally at the scrap yard to dump the body in the trunk of an old car. But not before Penguin grabs a ring as a trophy. And now, with everything taken care of, it's time to kill Victor. It's a nice sunrise behind you. You should take a look. Victor begs for his life. He says he can help him. He says he can help him with anything he needs. Now, Penguin really owns him, but I guess that's better than dying. So they just sit and watch the sunrise. They go to the Penguin's apartment, which again is pretty cool, but the Penguin's foot is not cool. It may be the grossest thing I've ever seen. He wears a brace, but it's mangled, and it definitely explains the waddle. He explains that he has to get ready for work because remember, nothing out of the ordinary happened last night, except a crazy night with, you know, the sex worker, which apparently sounds pretty normal for him. On his way, he looks at what the Riddler did to the city. That's not what he wants. He wants control of the underground. Chaos that he can't control is not part of the plan. When they get to his office, where they pack the eye drop drugs and count the money, he sends the dirt he found to a councilman and writes, let's be pals on the envelope. Another kind of smooth move. Hopefully this is another part of his plan. Turns out that most of the drops needed to be fished out of sewer water and might be contaminated, but they only recovered 30%, and none of that is gonna stop them from selling it. Then one of his guys was shot by someone on a run. Oh, we got every on the street test offenses. And right then he gets a call from the family. He's called in for a meeting. Look, if you don't want a clubbed foot monster to track you down, you better subscribe to this page right now. I'm just saying, you've been warned. I'm not responsible for any clubbed foot monsters, but if it does happen, it's probably because you didn't subscribe to this page. So right now is the time you just click the button. It's right down there. It'll work out perfectly for all of us. You know, I get a subscriber, you get some cool videos. So let's do it. So Oz and Victor head over to the rich part of town. Jesus, kid. I hold the 
crystal ball. They arrived at a mansion and Victor is amazed. This isn't in Gotham anymore. This is outside the city in the wealthy area that is untouched by the seawall collapsing. Penguin walks in and it turns out that this isn't about the kid mob boss at all. It's about shutting down his operation and moving it to another town. Penguin says they can't shut him down. He brings in so much money and that they recovered 70% of the product, even though it's only 30%. He goes into a rant about protecting what's theirs and not looking weak, but they shut him down hard. Because he's a courteous guy. I am not. You will do as you're told. Then he has a stroke of genius. He pitches the kid mob boss's idea about the new drug that's gonna change the game. But that's when Sophia Falcone walks in. Carmine Falcone's daughter that's been in Arkham for, you know, some murders. I've been rehabilitated and she wants to know where her brother is. Again, the bosses try to shut it down, but she pushes. By this time, the penguin is ready to leave, asking to speak again about the new drug. They tell him to shut down his operation in 48 hours, and he walks out defeated. But Sophia meets him outside, still looking for an answer about where her brother is. Penguin says that he hasn't seen him and that he's a busy man now that he's the boss. She seems like she doesn't trust him, and she notices the bullet hole in his purple Maserati. Well, technically it's plum. You can tell that she thinks that it's a bit ostentatious and tacky, but the bullet hole is really catching her attention. So she asks him out to lunch. And when the food comes, she eats like a crazy per. I've been rehabilitated. People at the restaurant whisper and stare and she wonders if they know it's her. Whatever she did in this storyline must have been nuts. The psycho killer is just roaming around free. Having a salad. She calls him out for pitching Alberto's idea to the bosses. He looks nervous and he kinda knows he's busted. But again, he talks his way out of it by saying that he's been in on this all along. That she's the surprise and yeah, he shouldn't have said anything to the other bosses, but he's been a partner in this thing for the whole time. Then he drops that Alberto has a drug addiction and an alcohol addiction and possibly a sex addiction and that he'll probably turn up eventually when he's ready and done with his bender. The thing is, is that no matter what's happening, Sophia has a limited time to take control of her family if her brother is gone. So maybe she's trying to get Oz on her side or maybe she's just messing with her brother's killer. She even whispers in Penguin's ear, I've always known you were capable of more. Which could mean that she doesn't believe him about her brother, but she's happy that he did her dirty work. And through all of this conversation, the one thing you know for sure is that she's the biggest wild card in the plan. Wild card! After the meeting, Penguin isn't telling Victor anything, but they do park the car and switch to the subway. Penguin, even though he has a mangled foot and wears a brace, he refuses to sit in the handicapped seat. That might also explain why it doesn't look like his foot has gotten much medical attention over the years. They get off the subway and they walk over to an old Volvo. Penguin grabs the keys and hops in. When he turns the car on, the music start playing Dolly Parton's working nine to five. Victor can't help but laugh at the thought of Penguin as mean as he is jamming out to Dolly Parton. They drive to a modest home. Turns out this is Oz's mother's house and he gives her the necklace that Alberta gave him. His mother is also suffering from some form of dementia. She seems to go in and out, but mostly stays in. Penguin, having to tell the truth to somebody, doesn't seem to lie to his mother. I shot Alberto Falcon. He even tells her that he killed someone because of something as simple as he laughed at him. She's not easy on him. She calls him weak and a lot of other things. But then she talks him up, tells him that he's close to becoming the boss and challenges him to do what it takes to make it happen. She's basically the exact type of mother that you would think that Penguin would have. After dinner, Victor and Penguin sit down at the house and watch Put the Blame on Mame by Gilda from 1946. Penguin is just strangely mesmerized by it. Later on, Oz is giving Victor some advice. Victor is hesitant to join this level of crime. Penguin admits that he knows the building that Victor lived in was destroyed by the flood. We don't know if Victor had family or friends in the building, but we can only assume. Penguin gives him a pep talk, kind of like his mother did, but with a lot less name calling. The world wasn't built for guys like us. That's why we gotta take whatever we decide is ours. And after the talk, Victor promises that he can be the guy that pulls through. The next day, Penguin goes to see a man named Sal in prison. Sal is another mob boss, the mob boss that Falcone wore his ring. It's just a kind of victory trophy that he could look at every day 
and the penguin is looking to jump sides. He says that the Falcons are out of touch and no longer what they used to be. He says that he can get all of the product to Sal and make him the top mob boss again. But Sal says no and that he doesn't work with people whose loyalty is for sale. But Penguin is completely undeterred and just keeps on with his speech. Whoever controls drops, controls the streets, you know that's right. Sal eventually says to never ever come back. Then Penguin drops the ring on the table. Sal's ring. The one that, you know, I just told you, Falcone wore as a trophy every day. That seemed to make Sal think a little bit more about the offer. Back in the city, Victor isn't answering, and whenever he goes to his apartment, he sees that Sophia and three really big guys are outside. He's still in his plum car, and she immediately sees him, and the chase is on. Penguin is initially getting away, but then he accidentally drives into a FEMA aid station that's blocked. So now the chase is on foot. But again, Penguin is smarter than your average henchman. He hides in the trunk, which is a brilliant idea, but the henchmen leave one guy with the car. They begin to fight in the car and the penguin uses his air freshener to stab the guy and he backs out of the car. The penguin pulls his gun, but then the guy gets hit by a school bus right then. And then penguin gets knocked out and all of this happened super fast. When he wakes up, he's getting beaten by Sophia and her guys. He's naked and she's holding his leg brace. There's a gun in his mouth, but it wouldn't be a Batman show if there wasn't a long, evil speech. The downside of driving a plum car is that it's very hard to forget. And so are you. She asked around and she knows that he was there that night. He says he doesn't know the kid and she kills the kid that talked. You are so good at talking your way out of things, even at the cost of someone else's life. I mean, think about it. She killed the kid even though she knew he was telling the truth. I mean, that is cold. She has a guy put piano wire under his arm and starts pulling. Just then, someone slams a car into the fountain at the Falcone Mansion, the same car they dumped the body in. Inside the trunk is Alberto's body missing a pinky and the ring. Penguin was being tortured at the time, so it couldn't have been him, right? Sophia looks like she's about to snap again, and then she does. <laughs> Next thing we see is Penguin getting a slushy with Victor, discussing the plan they went over before all of this happened. Didn't we agree? The head alone would be the most poetic, and the pinky, the cherry on top? It turns out that Penguin's plan is all coming together, and he is ready to set out and run this city. Hey, thanks for watching. Click here for more videos, and subscribe to keep up with all the Blake's World updates. I'd appreciate it. All right, I'll see you next time.